Hey guys, Jono here. I, I had a dream last night and I had a dream that I was um, been asked to preach and I had something prepared and then I'm like, actually, no, that's not what I really want to say. Uh, what is the one thing I really want to say? And I kind of got this message and I woke up and spent some time with God this morning at the coffee shop and I thought maybe I should actually write this down and it's just kind of really just illuminated with me. I thought, oh, I actually need to get this done. I need to, to write this out. So that's what I've done and I'm going to quickly try and share it with you as quick as I can. And this, the, the message that I, I got was suddenly... Uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So you can see a picture of this, this farmer. He's been working hard, working hard, then suddenly the harvest is ripe and ready to go. Do you know, just as there is there's winter and there's autumn and there's spring and, and there's, uh, there's and summer, you know, we've been through, many of us have been through a winter period and we think, oh, maybe this is our new reality. But can I just tell you that winter is a season. But as surely as there's been a winter, there is going to be coming a springtime and harvest. Do you know the Bible uh, is filled with many people who they received a promise. And then at the, suddenly, at the right time, that promise came to, to fruition. I think about Abraham and Sarah, who at the age of 75, God was promising him a child, uh, a son. 24 years went past, nothing happened. And then eventually, suddenly, God came through. He, at the age, he was promised, at the age of 99, he was told, you're going to have a baby anytime soon. At the age of 100, he had his child. I'm thinking about, I think about Noah. Noah, he was, uh, he built an ark, it took him 100 years. God told him, build the ark. Because that's gonna you're gonna need it, and then suddenly after 100 years they were all camped in the in the um, in the ark. God shut the door, and suddenly the rain came down, and suddenly the promise made a whole lot of sense. And uh, they needed that ark, and God kept His promise and kept them safe. I think about the um, the, the apostles, and they were told may, uh, by Jesus as He left the earth, wait in Jerusalem until you've been clothed with the power. And uh, so they waited and they prayed and they, and they were spending time with God all together. And there's 120 of them all in this upper room when suddenly there was like the sound of a rushing wind that came into the room where they were. And what it appears is tongues of fire came from every single one of their heads. And they spoke uh, in, in different languages that never learned, proclaiming the wonders of God. And they spoke the word of God boldly, suddenly as the Holy Spirit came upon them. Suddenly is a real thing with, with God. You know, there is a seasonal thing, but then suddenly God will bring the harvest at the right time if we do not give up. You see, the reality is in life is that there are different seasons that we need to endure. Just as surely as there is a winter, there's going to be a summer. As surely as there's autumn, there's going to be a spring. It's just different part of the tapestry of life that we need to get through. We read this in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, there is a time for everything. And a season for every activity under, under the heavens goes on and talks about all the different things that have to happen. There is a time to be born. There's a time to die and a time to plant, a time to uproot. It talks about a whole bunch of different things. Um, and then it goes on. And in verse 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. When God looks at the, our lives from the perspective of eternity, he looks down at the tapestry, the patchwork of our life. He sees it all blending in together. We may sometimes look at the the one season out of our life, maybe the winter time, maybe for you 2020 was a rough time. Maybe it was a time where you feel like, man, that was just really, really bad it was just really shocking. I feel like I've been ripped off with that, ripped off with this. But I feel like that's been stolen from me. This has been torn away from my life. But you know, this is this is a win this it's been a winter time for many of us. And if that is your reality, I'm really sorry for maybe a lot of the pain that you've had to go through. It is a terrible time, but you know, it is in that winter time that God prunes us. It's in that winter time that God sheds everything that we don't need. It's like for many of us, it's feel like, oh no, that's gone, that's gone, that's all we're going to do. But actually, it's part of God actually working inside of us, pruning us back so that we can become ever more fruitful in, in the next season to come. Um, 
So don't despise 2020. You know, I've been on Facebook and it's like every <laughs> every second post. Maybe that's an exaggeration. It's been like, oh, 2020, you, you, you suck, 2020. Oh. Remember that? Do you know, I think when we look back at 2020, hopefully we're looking back as some, some, as some posts I've seen say, wow, isn't it amazing what God has done inside of us? But, I, uh, but can I encourage you to not get stuck in winter? Don't get stuck in winter. That we actually need to be ready for the next season, for the harvest. You see, the Bible encourages us, even when thinking about the Lord's coming, that he's going to be coming soon, to be ready for that suddenly moment. In Matthew 24, 44, Jesus was talking about the time he would return to earth. He says, therefore, you must also be ready for the Son of God. Sorry, the Son of Man is coming at an hour. You do not expect it's going to come suddenly. If I was given 24 hours to live, I'd be doing a lot of things to get ready. I would be making sure that my house is in order, that my relationships were all good. I'd be phoning up my siblings. I'd be phoning up my mum and dad and just telling them what I really think, what I really feel. I'd be making sure I'm totally ready to meet my maker, I'd be thinking if there's anything I need to fix, I'll need to fix it now. And then after I've done all that, I'd go to the beach with my wife, Naomi, and my kids, and I'd enjoy a latte. It'd be great. <laughs> but we need to be ready. Do you know, the Bible says that we shouldn't just be ready, but just for when eternity hits us. We should be actually ready in the game, prepared for the journey that God's got on us right now, right this very moment. You know, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, talking about us being in the game, it says, Now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, I'm reading the wrong verse. Let me go down. Uh, let me just fix this up. And sorry, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those people who've gone before us, those who've fought the fight of faith, um, looking down and going, Come on! Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You know, you've got Paul up there. You know, I hear about so many people, you know, all the troubles they've gone through. I mean, for Paul, you know, if he wasn't beaten up, stripped bare, beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, uh, left for dead, backstabbed, it was a good day if he didn't do those things. You know, the fact that I couldn't sit down with my latte at the beach was definitely a first world problem. And I imagine coming into 2021, you've got people like Paul up there who've been through this, have been through rough times, know what it's like to take the knocks. He'd be going, come on, there's a church that we need to build. There is people that need to be reached. There is a community that need to be loved. Keep on doing the good work. I can imagine it. all those saints. I can imagine Jesus who you do at the cross. Let's keep our eyes fixed on him. Let's keep our eyes fixed on him. Let's get some encouragement from these guys. They're up there right now saying, guys, guys, this is not over. We need to do what God's called us to do. We need to build his church. We need to advance the kingdom of God. This time, I was only there for a little bit. Some guys go, yeah, I was there on earth for 40 years. How long were you? 70 years? Man, how long have these guys been on earth for? They've probably got another 20, 30 years left in them. Come on, let's get this done. Your life's only short. Keep on doing the good work. Keep on doing what God has called us to do. Let's run the race with perseverance. No one else can run your race. No one can cut in on you. There is a prize that God has called you to heaven woods. Get back in the race. Stop getting entangled in stuff. Don't go to envy. You see, I think when we go through winter, sometimes our, our souls need that comfort. Sometimes our souls need you know, just something to just kind of soothe us. And Paul's here in this, or whoever is writing the scripture in Hebrews, he's like, don't go to those things. Don't get entangled with darkness. Don't go into those dark areas of envy, of lust. Don't get tangled up. Get back into the light and move forward into what God has called you to do. Feed off God's word. It is our daily bread. Go to the word of life, which just sustains our souls, our daily bread, the word of God. Stop sitting around and go for it. You know, see the farmer, I reckon the farmer, when he sows his seed, obviously the seed grows by itself. See, he's sowing the seeds, but he's not just sitting there and going away on a holiday until the time comes when the harvest. I can imagine he's there with his sickle. He's sharpening his sickle, waiting for that harvest 
to come. He's watering the grounds. He's making sure he's getting his barns ready for bringing in the harvest. And you know, I reckon God is calling us to do those little things right now at the precipice of 2021 to prepare us for the harvest that God has called us to. The Bible in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Those small things that we can do, those continuing to pray, those prayers daily to God, asking God for His promises to be to come to fruition. Keep on reaching out to our neighborhoods. Keep on spending time with our kids, looking them in the eyes, and and sowing into our children, loving them and holding them and blessing them. Keep on meeting with other Christians and encouraging each other daily as we see, you know, God's coming. Keep on doing those small things day by day. You know, I remember listening to a message. I think it was, um, I had this, like, went to this men's breakfast. I think it was Nick Fard Jones. And he um, he talked about how he was the he was the captain of the Australian rugby team, and what happened was uh, he said one day when they played they just like smash the opposition that there would be an absolute blowout, and then the next day they'd get annihilated. And he's like, "What's the deal? We're like our players like fluctuating." And what they realised what they're doing is they just kept on in their minds, you know, just thinking about what was happening on the scoreboard, where were we up to, what's happening instead of their minds being in the game. Instead of their mind being on the next play, on where exactly they need to be positioned on the field, uh, uh, as opposed to you know every little tiny little detail of the game, instead of being in the game, their minds are on the scoreboard. And I, you know, I think that's what can sometimes happen. We're looking at the scoreboard of life, and we're waiting, and we're looking, and it's like a big fat zero. Or maybe a one, maybe if we're lucky. And we're, and we're like looking at the opposition score. The devil's got 13 goals. My life is so terrible. I just don't know if I can do this. Get over it. We need to, you need to, don't worry about the scoreboard right now. Can I just tell you, coming to 2021, get your eyes at the scoreboard and just keep, start sewing in those small things. Start doing those good things that the Bible is telling us to do, those things we're talking those small things, coming to church every single week, praying and reading your Bible, encouraging other people, meeting with other people, keep on sharing the Christ with others, keep on loving people, keep serving your community, keep doing those small things. And the Bible says if we keep on doing good, Galatians 6, 9, if, let us not become weary, oh, it's just too much, for at the, do, and doing good for at the proper time. At the, at, when springtime comes, we will. It's not we might, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So let's not give up. It, it, let's keep on doing those small things because we need to be ready and increase in our size for what is to come. Isaiah 40, 54 verses 1 to 3 says, Sing, barren woman. Start getting excited. Keep Start prophesying to so the spiritual realm keep prophesying that sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Length, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. See, we're called... Not to just stay small, not to just contain all this little bit that God's given us. But God's like, you know what? You need to spread out. You need to enlarge the place of your tent. You need to bang those tent pegs in wide. Stick to what God has called you to do. And all those different things, because you're going to enlarge, you're going to, God's kingdom is going to come to you. You're going to receive that harvest. You need to be ready for that time. But you know what? Not just for this time, but for the time to come. Because it says there in verse 3, uh, it says, For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your dis-, and then it goes on to talk about your children. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. So we're stretching out. We keep on doing the good work, not just for us. But in 15, 20 years' time, we're going to have children come after us. And then their children come after them in many, many years to come. You see, I'm so grateful for um, my parents who, you know, they uh, gave their life to Jesus when my, me and my older brother and young, older sister were young. And they made a decision to follow Jesus and they served God faithfully, prayed faithfully, served faithfully. Now, 
like I'm one of six children, one of my six siblings who all love God, serving, uh, helping in the church. All, um, all, all of us have, uh, and, and those of us who've had children, all our children now are in the church, uh, loving Jesus. And that's an incredible testimony to the grace of God, but also to my parents who serve God faithfully because they spread out as much as they could. And maybe they didn't receive every little thing that they were hoping for. But can I tell you, I tell you what, I tell you what, it's looking pretty good for the future. Do you know what I mean? It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good indeed. And that 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 lineage of, of that faithfulness to God is going to continue going down because of the faithfulness of my parents and obviously the faithfulness of God. And that's what's going to be like for your family, for our family. If we keep on doing the good things of God, it will work out well for us. It will work out well for our families. In the end, it will work out well for, for our descendants as well. So in closing, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Do you know, this all doesn't come down to, we don't want to put our hope in hope. Actually, what we're putting our hope in is him, is God. It says we should do this not because we are awesome, not because we are positive thinking people, even though hopefully we are. It, we should do this because we know God, because we know him who's promised the promise, the promise keeper, the way maker, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the Bible says we should keep our eyes fixed on him. We should, we, should, we should be following him. We should be knowing him. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to Jesus. So let us put our hope in Jesus. Let's hold on. Let's come keep on doing those small things. Get rid of the stuff. Get rid of anything that's just stopping you from moving forward. Get in the game. Because as surely as there's been a winter, can I promise you, in the pro but God's promise to us is that springtime is coming and harvest is coming too. So there you go. That's what I, I felt I needed to preach last night when I was in my dream. And I wrote it down. And now I have preached it uh, for 17 minutes and 23 seconds, which is really a long time. Anyway, God bless you for 2021. I hope somehow maybe the word of Christ has encouraged you this morning. May you have a wonderful day. Bless you.